Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about intermittent fasting. What is it and what are the benefits of intermittent fasting? So let's get right into it. In very simplistic terms, it's basically consuming fewer or no calories over a time frame, whether that would be 10 hours, 12 hours, 16 hours, etc. Right? Intermittent fasting has been used uh, historically for religious purposes as well as some medical conditions. And then if you look at prehistoric times, we're talking about hunter-gatherers. Right? You would go out, hunt, eat, feast, and then you may go a few days without food. So intermittent fasting has been a historical thing. So what does intermittent fasting do? It shifts your body from using glucose or glycogen to using ketones or fatty acids. So if you look at it, it shifts it into a ketogenic state. It uses fuel called ketones. So body's available glucose and glycogen gets depleted over a time frame that uh, it's going to be individualized. Some people will be in a ketogenic state in 12 hours. Some people will be 24 hours. However, it will deplete it and then you're going to use your fat stores or ketones to drive your systems. So what are some of the benefits of using ketones as fuels, fuel as rather than glucose? So intermittent fasting and benefits, right? There are a lot of them, okay? One is weight loss, right? Also improves body composition. So that's one reason. But it also improves cardiovascular risk. It improves uh, one, inflammation, and two, it can improve your lipid panel, like cholesterol, LDLs, improves HDLs, etc. So um, Another one is it decreases blood pressure or helps to improve blood pressure. Another one is it improves glucose metabolism, the body to utilize glucose more efficiently. Therefore, it improves insulin sensitivity, right? So if you're borderline diabetic, you have hemoglobin A1C of 5.7 to maybe 6. You are insulin resistant. Then you can use a ketogenic diet to improve insulin sensitivity because you're not just feeding your body with glucose, you're able to give it a break and you're using ketones as fuels. Now, it also improves fasting insulin, so your first morning insulin will also improve. Other benefits is that it decreases oxidation, so it can work like an antioxidant, right? So you're not taking in food and you're not processing all that um, carbohydrates and, and, and sugars and etc. So it decreases oxidation, and again, it decreases inflammation. Also, athletes have been using it to improve athletic performance, and not every athlete will do this, or not every athlete will benefit from, from this, but it has been shown to improve athletic imp performance in, in quite a number of uh, people. It will also improve longevity, right? So improve um, uh, basically quality of life longer into um, to advanced ages. Other benefits are it will improve gut microbiome as well as your immune function. So there are a lot of different benefits that come along with intermittent fasting and it's become quite popular in certain populations. So it's important to understand why you would do it, what the benefits are, and in some patients you have to be cautious, right? If you have advanced type 2 diabetes or you have type 1 diabetes, I would suggest you know, using a provider who knows what they're doing to help them guide them through that process, right? Because you want to make sure they're not going to go into um, ketoacidosis, uh, which can be quite dangerous for that person. So it's very important for that patient to understand what's going on with them. So on our next video, we're going to talk about all the different types of intermittent fasting so you can get an idea of what you might fit into your lifestyle and what the benefits you can reap from it. Today we're going to talk about intermittent fasting and the different methods you can utilize to fit into your busy schedule. We'll go right into it 
alternate day fasting. This is when you're eating for 24 hours normally, and then the next 24 hours you may only drink water. So you're abstaining from eating any calories, can, any calorie containing beverages and food for every other day, right? Alternate days of fasting. Next one is a modified alternate day fasting. And this is not a true fast because on the day that you're supposed to be fasting, you're, you are actually taking in 20 to 25% of your normal caloric intake. So let's say you have a 2000 calorie diet, then on the day you're fasting, you're only taking in about 500 calories. So it's not a true fast because you, know, you, you are taking some calories in during that day. You have a time-restricted feeding window. This is when you eat for a certain time frame during the day, and then you fast the rest of the day. And that window can be anywhere from 4 to 12 hours. So you can vary that up. So you can say, I'm only eating between noon and 4, or 4 and 8 p.m., and then you're going to fast the rest of the time. So you can fast anywhere from 12 to 20 hours for the day. What I find most uh, useful for most patients is a feeding window of eight hours and a fasting uh, window of 16. So that way you're, let's say you're eating at noon and you can go all the way to eight o'clock and then you won't eat anything beyond eight o'clock until the following day at noon. So that's a good way to get patients started in terms of intermittent fasting. I personally use a 8 to 16 window. So I will, I get off work a little bit later. So I get home, it's around 7.38 by the time I have dinner. So I won't eat till the following day around noon or 12.30, right? So I have a window of 16 hours where actually I'm not having any caloric intake, all right? So there are other methods of feeding where you do early time restricted feeding. So you're gonna pick a time frame, maybe four to six hours that you can eat early in the morning. And that time frame can be anywhere from, let's say 6 a.m. to noon or 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. You pick the hours early on and then you fast for the rest of the day, only drinking water. Then you'll have a cycling one where you have five days on and two days off. So we call it a periodic or cycling fast. You are eating for five days normally, and then you'll fast for two days drinking only water, okay? Another popular one is six to one, where you're eating normally for six days and then fasting for one. Now you can actually use a combination of these, right? So I personally will use the eight to 16 fasting window, and then one day a week I will fast, right? So I will do intermittent fasting for six days, eight hours of feeding time, 12 hours off. And then on Mondays, I actually don't eat anything. I drink water, right? And I see patients all day long. And I can get through that without any sluggishness or mental fatigue or anything like that. So it actually helps improve cognitive function. Now, there are other uh, feeding uh, schedules for intermittent fasting. So for someone who has, let's say, chronic inflammatory processes, you can use longer fast to um, initiate what we call autophagy or autophagy, right? basically cleaning up debris from your body, the dead cells. So you can go longer, three days, four days, five days, right? It's also helpful for people who have things like Alzheimer's or uh, cognitive decline, where you can use that feeding window, a uh, longer um, fasting window to help clean out uh, the debris, right? So your body is basically uh, not processing any foods, right? And it's focused on um, keeping your uh, cells healthy. So a longer feeding period or fasting period for some people can be quite beneficial. But for longer feeding or fasting windows, you should be monitored, right? Because you can go into a hypoglycemic state and you don't realize it, 
you need to kind of gradually work into it or work with a provider who understands what's going on with you. Other patients like hypoglycemic patients where they have uh, tend to have low blood sugar and they get hungry or angry right, or hangry, right? Those types of patients, you have to get them a little bit more keto adaptive or have them have more fats in their diet before they can even do a fast. So you may have to put in more avocados, uh, extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, and so forth to help build their reserves of fat so they can utilize it before they can even do a fast later on. And their fasting window might be short in the beginning, right? There might be a 12 and 12. 12 hours they're eating, 12 hours they're fasting. And then gradually change their uh, ratio uh, to a different level. But hypoglycemic patients need to be careful. Also with intermittent fasting or longer intermittent fasting, if you're a type 2 diabetic who's chronic or a type 1 diabetic, you have to be very cautious, right? Because those patients can go into ketoacidosis. So they need to be monitored um, before going ahead and doing aggressive uh, intermittent fasting regimens. Today, we're going to talk about the benefits of intermittent fasting. Now, there are a lot of fad diets out there. Um, one that's popular was 600 calories, and you're taking growth hormones uh, to help you lose weight. Most of these diets are short-lived or short-term. If you want to do a dietary plan or a lifestyle change, intermittent fasting might be the right one for you because it changes physiology. It changes it long term. So when we look at it, in terms of weight loss benefit, it'll change your uh, body contour by you losing fat, right, rather than muscle. And then you can decrease blood pressure as well as your heart rate. So it has a significant impact on your cardiovascular function, right? Glucose management, as well as decreasing insulin. So during that intermittent fasting period, you're going to re reduce insulin load. So if you have insulin resistance, dysglycemia, or diabetes, prediabetes, right? It can help manage that, right? One, it may reduce the, um, the need for medications or two, decrease the amount of medications that you are taking. So there's a quite a number of benefits in terms of weight loss, um, in terms of cardiovascular effects and management of glucose. Now, in terms of what we call metabolic switching, it also does a lot of different things, right? It helps to improve energy by increasing mitochondrial function, right? So it improves mitochondrial biogenesis. Right? It develops new mitochondria. It helps recovery. It helps with cognition and brain function. And that's because when we get to a certain point and we become, let's say, insulin resistant, the brain uses a lot of glucose to function. That's why when people study for long periods of time, they get hungry because the brain is very biologically active, it uses a lot of glucose and oxygen. So, if you go into what we call metabolic switching, you're using ketones as fuel rather than sugar. Therefore, your brain function or cognition can improve because now it is using a different fuel uh, for the brain rather than sugar. It also has tumor uh, suppression uh, effects. So it helps to improve cancer prevention. It's a great um, added benefit there. Uh, cancer rates are through the roof. Decrease in neurodegeneration. So it's very, very beneficial also for people who have early onset Alzheimer's, uh, Parkinsonisms, um, or degenerative changes, or even people who have um, post-concussion syndromes and so forth. With post-concussion syndromes, you do have to be careful because some of those patients become hypoglycemic. So you have to take them into different phases of care before you go and have them intermittent fast. Improves antioxidant production. What a great benefit. Antioxidants are protective, right? It protects your heart, it protects your vasculature, it pr protects your brain, it protects your cells from damage. So antioxidant effects are quite beneficial here. And the other one is it decreases inflammation. 
Decreasing inflammation also has an added cardiovascular effect, as well as improving overall functions in the cell. Because when you have inflammation, you retain water, uh, your body has a um, heightened immune response. So inflammatory processes uh, can create chronic health conditions. Therefore, by decreasing inflammation, you can have the added benefit uh, of cardiovascular benefits and cellular function and so forth. So there's a lot of benefits that come along with intermittent fasting, and it might be a good idea to look into it and see if it's right for you. You can go back and watch a couple of the other videos I've made on intermittent fasting that explains uh, time intervals and so forth and how to do it. So uh, on my next video, we're going to talk about the exact physiology of how this might work, uh, intermittent fasting, and how it uh, uh, impacts gene expression and protein synthesis. Today we're going to talk about intermittent fasting and the impact it has on cellular function. We often talk about the different impacts and benefits of intermittent fasting, but how does it all work at the cellular level? So let's get into some of the physiology, right? Intermittent fasting basically activates certain proteins that regulate cellular function. So there's a protein called FOXO, and this is the protein that will help suppress tumors. So it has tumor suppression action, therefore minimizing or uh, improving uh, can cancer outcome, right? PGC1-alpha. This is where the energy is produced, right? We're talking about mitochondrial biogenesis. It actually uh, creates more mitochondria, improving cellular energy. And it's also remodeling of tissues. So there is a process called autophagy or autophagy, where there's gonna be cleaning up of cellular debris, right, in our body. And it's a great way to remodel some of our tissue. And also, um, it's a metabolism regulation um, uh, protein. So it improves um, a calorie burning uh, capabilities, basically improves that sluggish uh, body where you feel tired all the time. So you have more energy, you have more mitochondria, and more function. NRF2. This is the protein that helps reduce inflammation. Right? It's anti-inflammatory effects. So it helps cardiovascular function, uh, reduces water retention, uh, reduces chronic disease, and so forth, because you're minimizing inflammatory processes in our body. The other one is activates kinases that modulate gene expression. So this is where we have genetic expression that can be altered because you're intimate in fasting. So there is AMPK kinase, and this is the one that regulates energy. And it's also responsible for repair and recovery. So after injury, right, you want this to be upregulated so you can repair and recover, or with chronic disease, or any acute inflammatory processes. You want to be able to regulate your energy and then repair and recover from that injury. CERT genes, right? It turns on genes for stress resistance and myo mitochondrial biogenesis. Again, another gene that improves energy, right? So it has a great impact on your, let's say, fatigue. I'm tired all the time. I eat and I fall asleep. It improves insulin resistance. It improves uh, mitochondrial function for ATP production. So when we look at intermittent fasting and we go, oh wow, there's all these benefits, but how does it really work? It works by stimulating protein synthesis, right? And then it also impacts gene expression uh, and also improves bio, uh, mitochondrial biogenesis. So it has many impacts. So if you have never tried intermittent fasting and you have chronic health conditions, uh, you might want to consider and look at some of the intermittent fasting intervals to see which one might fit well into your um, daily life, as well as a ketogenic diet. So using ketogenic diets along with intermittent fasting 
can have a profound impact on your overall health. Today we're going to talk about intermittent fasting and cleaning up the body. So let's get right into it. Intermittent fasting and cleaning up the body. The process of autophagy or autophagy or mitophagy or mitophagy. Intermittent fasting, what does it do? So there is something called protein aggregates. And if you do intermittent fasting, you can increase the breakdown of these protein aggregates called autophagy. So during the fasting phases, it helps to clear out these protein aggregates. Aggregates like amyloid and tau associated with Alzheimer's, alpha-synuclein associated with Parkinson's, and Lewy body dementia. So when you're looking at it, <clears throat> the autophagy really impacts the brain. And neurons become much more efficient during the fasting phases. And it will help decrease inflammation or neuroinflammation. The other process of autophagy is it cleans out prime glial cells. Glia is the basically the immune system or the glue of the brain, and it has a role in many different things. One of the things that can happen is when you have traumatic brain injury or significant post-traumatic stress, you can prime the microglia of the brain. It turns on these immune cells in the brain and creates havoc around the tissues where it's turned on. So when we look at glial cells that are primed, you want to be able to clear that out. And that's the process of autophagy also. And then that in itself will decrease inflammation. So it cleans out immune cells that are hyperactive and it cleans out protein aggregates that affect brain function and then decreasing neural inflammation altogether. Now intermittent fasting will also create um, improvement in damaged mitochondria. So it will clean out mitochondria, which is basically the powerhouse of the cells that produce ATP. So the damaged mitochondria increases mitophagy from fasting and clears out damaged mitochondria from the cell. It promotes mitochondrial efficiency. So you're just getting rid of those mitochondria that are damaged and not producing enough ATP uh, to provide energy for the cell. So you're trying to improve mitochondrial function overall. It will increase cellular ATP and then increases cell function altogether, thereby also decreasing neural inflammation. So the process of intermittent fasting can have a profound effect on how the brain can function and decrease intermittent uh, neural inflammation. Now, if I've done other videos on intermittent fasting, so you might want to go ahead and watch those because uh, there are a lot, there's a lot of information out there about intermittent fasting and how it can be good for you. What I'm trying to teach you here is the, the process that occurs when you actually do the intermittent fasting and how it, a, a profound in, impact you can have uh, on your body if you can catch it early enough. So if you can catch Alzheimer's or, or uh, Parkinson's disease early on and you start implementing a ketogenic diet, intermittent fasting, you can have a profound effect without any really taking any nutrients or supplements. You can have a profound effect just on dietary intake alone. Okay, my name is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.